Welcome. We are on page three of our chapter four exam practice, and this is number 15. So we have a sample of children that were asked about their preferred pet. So I've got my two-way frequency table. So I've kept track of whether they were elementary or middle school students, and then their choice for their preferred pet. So let me do some totaling here first. So I'll do columns. So it looks like nine students said they their preferred pet was a bird. And then we should have 27 for cat, 42 said dog, and 22 said fish. All right, and if you add those together, you can check here, but you will get 100 students. And then they also classified them as elementary. So if you add that row, you'll see two plus six plus 28 plus 10, 56 elementary school students. And then adding middle school, that will be 44. And then just checking again that you get all 100 students. All right, we'll pick a child at random and find some probabilities. So probability that we pick a student that is in middle school. And I am going to write a formula here. You can go right to the answer, but just a reminder with classical probability, theoretical probability, we would take the number of children that are in middle school and divide by the number of children in our sample space. So in this case, our sample space would be made up of the 100 children. And we just do capital S there, sample space. All right, so numerator out of those 100 children, we've got 44 that are in middle school. So the probability of picking a middle school student, 44 out of 100. And we're just going to leave the fraction like that because I want to compare denominators later, so we're not going to reduce. All right, and then our next one is, what if we pick a child? What is the probability they are a middle school student and they were a child that said their preferred pet was fish? So reminder here that and is intersection. So we're only going to include outcomes, students that satisfy both conditions. So they have to be middle school and they have to be a person, a student that shows fish. So I see there 12. So 12 of them were middle school that said fish. And I'm just going to go straight to the answer this time. So 12 students in the intersection out of the 100. All right, and then we'll switch to or probabilities. And the first one is, what is the probability of picking a student that is a student that prefers cats or a student that prefers dogs? So or is union. And in probability, it indicates to use the addition rule. So the addition rule applies for or probabilities. And we would take the probability that the child meets the first condition. They said they prefer cat, plus the probability they meet the second condition. They prefer dog. And in this case, cat and dog are mutually exclusive. So a child cannot be part of both of those. They had to choose just one of their options for preferred pet. So we can go straight to substitution. And I just write the denominator once, so 100. So we'll just take the probability of cat, so 27 out of the 100, plus probability of dog, 42 out of 100, and then we add the numerators, that will be 69 over 100. All right, so we have another or, but this time we're going to see events that are not mutually exclusive. So in this case, I'm going to do some circling. We want the probability that the student is an elementary school student. So let me just circle my elementary school students. Or, so union, I want to also include anybody that said they prefer dog as their preferred pet. So I'm just circling everybody that said dog. All right, so or union means bring those groups together. So we're going to take every elementary school student along with every student that said that I prefer a 
dog. So if we apply the addition rule, what we're going to look at are totals. So the total elementary school student plus the total number of students that said dog, we would have to subtract any students that were part of both groups. So those 28 students are included twice, once in the 56, once in the 42. So we have to get our correct answer by subtracting that total. So 28 needs to be subtracted from the two totals. So let's just write the rule here um, instead of me just talking at you. So addition rule will take the probability of being an elementary school student along with, so plus, I like to say along with, we're going to take every student that said my preferred pet is a dog, and then we have to subtract any students that are in the intersection. So any students that are part of both of those groups, and we will still have that common denominator of 100. All right, so what we want to remember here is that you're using the outside of the table, the totals, when you're applying the addition rule. So total elementary school was 56 plus total number that preferred dog is the 42. And then what we have to subtract, I'm just going to highlight it there in pink. I'm going to have to subtract the 28 students that were part of both groups. All right, so that's why I like to call the rule total plus total minus anybody in the intersection, so anybody part of both groups. All right, so you can throw that on the calculator, 56 plus 42, and then you're going to subtract the 28. All right, and that should give you 70 out of 100. All right, and then we're going to move on to conditional probability. So conditional probability is when we have a given statement or a given that statement. So conditional probability, and these are written in symbols. So this would read the probability of picking an elementary school student, and that vertical line is read given or given that. Given that, the student preferred dog. All right, so I'll write the formula here and then kind of discuss the concept. So what we would do is count the number of students that satisfy both conditions. They have to be an elementary school student and they have to have said they preferred dog. And then the switch here is that when we have a condition, when we have a, that says given the answer, sorry, I meant given that, given that, so when we have a condition, it's going to restrict who we can look at. So you cannot look at all 100 students anymore. The condition is you can only look at those students that did say, I prefer dog. So the denominator is not everybody. It's only the number of them that prefer dog. All right, so whatever the given that is, that determines your denominator and it restricts who you can look at. So that determines your denominator. So I'm just gonna focus on the denominator first. So I'm only allowed to look at people that prefer dog. I'm just gonna box them all in. So there's all the people that prefer dog. I'm only allowed to look at those 42 people. Those 42 students are the only ones under consideration. And that's the idea with given that. All right, and then you can answer the probability. So we want the probability that you would pick an elementary school student if you're picking from these 42 people and 28 were elementary school students. So there's your numerator. So 28 satisfy both of those conditions out of 42 students. All right, we'll do one more conditional probability. So the next one reads, what is the probability of picking a person that preferred cat, given that they are in middle school? All right, so this is the given. And the formula 
You can write the formula if it helps, or if you're good with going to the answer, that's fine as well. We're going to look for the number of students that satisfy both conditions. And then that denominator is going to tell you which students you are allowed to consider. All right, so the given determines the denominator. And I'm going to go ahead and do my denominator first. But let me just circle who I'm allowed to look at. So the given, I can only look at middle school students. So I'm just going to box that row in. It's a little messy there, but I'm just kind of boxing that row in. You can only look at these students. So the denominator, you're only allowed to look at the 44 students that satisfy the given condition. And then you do the probability. So if you're only looking at those 44, you want the probability of picking a student that preferred cat. So 11 out of the 44. Okay, let's move on to number 16. So I have cards here numbered one through nine. We'll pick a card at random. We wanna know the probability about this selected card. And for A, the probability it's greater than five and it's even. So and again is intersection. We have to only include values that satisfy both of these conditions. So I'm going, going to go ahead and just write down here if we look at the numbers greater than five, that would be six, seven, eight, nine. And let's look at this condition. Even would be two, four, six, eight. So we're looking for values common to both of those sets. So they both share a six. They both share an eight. So they have two numbers in common. All right, so if I pick one of these nine numbers, there'll be two numbers in the intersection. So two of the numbers have both characteristics out of the nine values. All right, so that's and intersection, and then let's go to or. So or means combine the groups, take all the numbers greater than five along with all of the numbers that are even. So I'm just going to write down all the numbers here so I can circle. So here's our sample space, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we're gonna take all the numbers greater than five along with all the even numbers. So we still have to circle. There's still some evens left. There's a two and a four as an even. And that should be good. I've circled all the numbers that meet one of those conditions, possibly both conditions, but we just need one or the other. So union means everybody comes along, combine the groups. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of the outcomes out of the nine. Okay. So for number 17, we're just gonna organize our work here with a Venn diagram. So I have eight cards numbered one through eight. We've got some gray ones and white ones. And our two events will be A, the card is white. So two, three, five, seven. And B will be that the card is odd. And I'm just gonna write them the odd ones here. One, three, five, seven. So I'm good with leaving off our set notation, those braces around the set. Um, and you can put commas as well, but as long as I can read our outcomes, we'll be good. So let me just first write our sample space. So if you consider everything possible, we would have cards one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I am going to take these cards and place them on the Venn diagram. And we'll also look at these particular outcomes. So with Venn diagrams, we always want to start at the intersection. So that symbol is our intersection. So let's just come up and look at what cards are shared. So it looks like three is white and it's also odd. Five is white and it's odd. Seven is white and it's odd. So our two circles here would overlap. They would have in common three, five, seven. All 
All right, so I can answer the intersection here, three, five, seven. All right, then union, union symbol would mean take all the white cards along with all of the odd cards. So I could just start writing them here, but I'd like to finish my Venn diagram. So event A, and event A was the card is white. I think I'm just gonna write white above that, white. So inside that circle, the white cards, we've got three, five, seven, but we're missing uh, two. So two is white as well. It's not odd, B is odd. It's not odd, but it is inside the white circle. And then let's finish the odd circle. So we've got three, five, seven, three, five, seven, but we're missing the card one. All right, so if I was dragging these cards, I'd know where they are. And let me answer the union part here. So we'll take all the white cards along with all the odd cards. So two, three, five, seven, one. And you don't have to write them in numerical order as long as we've got them two, three, five, seven, one. Now, I do want to see, I think we still have some cards left in our sample space. So let me cross off the ones inside the circles. Let me cross off union and see what's left. So I'm going to cross off. We've got the one, the two, the three. We've got the five, and we've got the seven. So we've got the one, two, three, five, seven. That still leaves the four, the six, and the eight. So they would be outside of our circles because they meet neither condition. They're not white and they're not odd. All right, and then finally our part D here. So the A with the bar over it indicates we want the complement of A. So the complement of A consists of everything that is not part of A. So cards that are not in this case, white, so cards that are not white. So all the cards outside that white circle would be one, four, six, eight. All right, I'm gonna go on to page four here. And we have a spinner with six equally sized slices and some of those are white, some of those are gray. We'll spin the spinner once, and we're gonna be looking for probabilities here. So the first one, A, is what is the probability it lands on an odd number slice, given that the spinner lands on gray? All right, so whatever follows the given, this is your condition. So the given, tells me I can only look at the gray slices. So the given says I can only look at one, three, five, six. So that's how we know our denominator isn't all six slices. Our denominator will be those four slices. So I'll write the question here. We want the probability that picking an odd, given that vertical line called a pipe, given that we landed on a gray slice. All right, so the formula would be take a look at the number that meet both conditions. They're odd and they're gray. And the denominator, again, is determined by the given. So the denominator here, the number that are gray. And we have then our denominator. So we've got four gray cards. All right, so once you figure out the cards you're allowed to look at, then answer the probability question. So we want probability of odd, given you're looking at those four cards. And of those four, not cards, I guess slices, of those four slices, an odd one would be the one, the three, or the five. So three of those slices are odd and also part of the gray card. All right, it does say answer in percent form, so that will be 0 0.75 or 75%. All right, so for B, they want the probability of a gray slice given the spinner lands on a number greater than one. 
So the given in this case, we're only allowed to look at numbers greater than one. So two, three, four, five, six. All right, so now we know our denominator, there are five slices that are greater than one. All right, so we want the probability that we land on gray. I'm doing a lot of writing with notation. If you're fine going to the answer, that's okay as well. But we want the probability of gray given the number is greater than one. And I am gonna just go to the answer after this. All right, so we know that our denominator is five because there are five values greater than one. And then when you're looking at those five values, we want the probability that you would get a gray given you're looking at those slices. All right, so the gray ones, two is white, four is white, three would be, that one's gray, five is gray, and six is gray. So three of them are gray out of those five. And then again, it does ask for a percent form. So you can divide that, you'll get 0 0.6, and that would be 60%. Okay, and then we'll end here with a Venn diagram. All right, this time the Venn diagram is built for us, and it says we have a teacher that surveyed 15 students. So inside our Venn diagram rectangle, you add six plus three plus four plus two, that is 15. I'm just gonna write N outside the Venn diagram. So we got 15 students. And then before I start answering questions, I'm just gonna make some notes here. So the three students in the intersection, they own both. They satisfy both conditions. Those three students have a cat and they also have a dog. And then the let's go with the dog circle. These six students do have a dog, but those six students are not inside the cat circle. So dog, I'll say dog only. So they have a dog, but they don't have a cat. And then our four students over here are part of the cat circle, but these four are not part of the dog circle. So those four have a cat only, no dog. And then we've got our two students out here that would have neither a cat nor a dog. All right, so then we can just answer some of these questions. So how many of the students own a dog? So you're looking at the entire dog circle here. So six plus three would be nine. You don't have to write work, I'm just getting it. If you wanna see where I'm getting the value here, I'm gonna write the nine outside the circle there. So nine in total. How many students own a dog, but not a cat? So we've got that already, six. All right, how many students do not own a cat? So here's my cat circle. So three plus four, seven students in the cat circle, I'll write that outside. So those seven do own a cat. So the ones that don't, outside the circle, six plus two would be eight. Or you could say 15 minus those seven that own a cat would not own a cat, that would also give you eight. So different ways to think about it. I'll write that 15 would be the total if we subtract people that do own a cat, we would get the people that don't. So those would be complements. All right, and then D, how many students own a cat, a dog, or a cat? All right, or is union. So we're gonna include everybody that owns a dog along with everybody that owns a cat. And since we've drawn the Venn diagram out, let's just do union by looking at the students then that are inside these circles. So six plus three plus four would include all the students, whether they're a dog, a cat, or own both. And that is 12, that is 13, not 12, 13.
And just as a note, the other way you could get 13 is that rule about total, total. So you could add the 9 plus the 7. You would just have to remember to subtract the 3. So just another way to think about it, you could take all the dog owners plus all the cat owners, but you would have to subtract 3 for those three students that are part of both groups. And you'll still get 13. So different ways to think about it. And then finally, how many students do not own both a dog and a cat? So three own both. So everybody else doesn't. So we could say 15 minus three, that would be one way to go. So 15 minus the three that own both would give us 12. Or we also could have said, if you're not one of these three, then you're one of the ones that are not in the intersection. So six plus four plus two would also give you 12. So whatever works um, for you when you see the Venn diagram. All right, and there we go. So that wraps up our last couple pages of our chapter four review.